Hello students, so this is Brock Skaggs, and I'm going to make this video discussing how to create custom weldment profiles inside of SolidWorks. And so, uh, just to review weldments a little bit, um, I've got the weldments tab already up and showing. I've got my structural member here that I can apply to, say, this line segment. And you basically select the cross-section you want to apply uh, through the drop-downs over here in terms of standard, type, and size. And so when you first install SolidWorks, um, you do have some profiles that come with it. And so you've got two standards, ANSI inch and ISO. If we go to ANSI inch, you can see I've got a few different types. I can do this angle iron here. You've got it rectangular, tubing, pipe, and so forth. And then under each one of these, you have a few different sizes here. And so you can see I've got one by one, two by two, and a three by two piece of angle iron. But say you want more than this. Say the cross section that you have already specced out in your mind and you want to apply to your model is not one of these options. Well, there's a few different ways to do that. One way, and probably the, the first way that I would check, um, because it has a little bit less work, is to come over here to the uh, design library side, go to SolidWorks content here, go to weldments, and what you see here are a bunch of different icons representing different standards. And so here, if I just hover over the first one and look at the tooltip, notice if I hit control, hold down control and hit the left mouse button, it'll start to download a zip file. And that zip file is actually going to include a lot of profiles there that you can use in your designs. And so when you download the zip file, it's going to go to something like your downloads file. If you uncompress it so it's not in the zip file, you'll end up with something like this. And so if we look at this folder, ANSI Inch SolidWorks Content, notice the second level, I've got a different bunch of different types. And so you've got aluminum channels, L angles, S sections, W sections, and then if I click on each one of these, all these SLD, F, excuse me, SLD, LFP file, SolidWorks library feature part files are all the different types, or excuse me, all the different sizes, I should say, of the individual type. And so here we see a bunch of different wide flanged I-beams here and the different sizes here. Like this W4 by 13, uh, if my memory is correct, it has a roughly nominal 4 inch depth and it weighs about 13 pounds per foot there. And so uh, now that we've downloaded these, what do we do with them? Well, you have to know where SolidWorks is looking for these individual profiles. And so to do that, you go up to Options. You go to File Locations under the System Options and you scroll down to the weldment profiles in the show folders for area. And so here's an example. I've got two folders actually listed here. This first one, the C program files, SolidWorks Corp, SolidWorks Lang, English, and weldment profiles, that's the default one. That's the default path that SolidWorks looks for in within all of its files there for the weldment profiles. Uh, this other one is an example if you want to set up additional ones. And so SolidWorks will basically look in the C location and then also in the E location in Baja Baja weldments in this specific case here. Uh, this is one that you don't necessarily have to have. Um, this run is originally put on my machine as I was uh, playing around with uh, the concept where students could basically put all their weldment profiles on their jump drive and then carry those around to machine to machine. And all they would have to do at the local machine on one of the labs is just basically put the path in there, then they would have access to all their weldment profiles. We'll just use the top one though. And so what we'd need to do is we would need to place that folder in this location. And so that's easy enough. Uh, basically just get out another Windows Explorer and start following the path as I'm doing here. And here's my weldment profiles there. And so once I get to that destination, I see what you see before you. And so you have to be careful here on the file or folder structure here. I'm going to go ahead and close this because the folder structure or directory structure is tied to these combo boxes here. Notice my first drop down box is standard, ANSI inch ISO. Second drop down box is type, and that's angle iron, C channel, pipe, and so forth. And third is size. These are the actual profile files. Well, that needs to be mimicked here. Notice my first level is the standard ANSI inch. If I go into ANSI inch, notice I've got angle iron, C channel, pipe, rectangular tube, S section, and tube. These were the same options here. And if I go to angle iron, you can see I have the different files themselves here. And these are the actual library feature part files that SolidWorks uses in its weldments there. 
And so when I go to uh, implement the use of these, I need to be sure to paste it in the correct spot. So this is going to be the standard ANSI inch cell doors content. These are the types, so that'll go to this combo box, and then I actually have the sizes underneath there. And so all I need to do is control C and control V, copy and paste, and give it a second here to populate for us. Very good. And so now let's get out of this, come back in, go to standard and Voila, we have ANSI inch solidworks content. Here are all our different sizes. I'll go to an S section, uh, go to a fairly small I beam here, S3 by 5.7, and I can apply it to my line segment there to uh, create the weldment profile. And so that's one very easy way in order to get a lot more options inside of the profiles. But say you're looking through here and you say, well, I don't, I still don't find what I want. Uh, so that's where you'd have to create your own custom weldment profile. And so we can do that. I'm going to go ahead and delete this off. And I'll go to actually a pre-made file already. And so here's my, my custom weldment profile. And so how did we go about creating this? Well, you can see it's just a two-dimensional sketch. Um, I'm sketching it on the front plane. Now I don't believe it's a strict rule that you have to do this on the front plane, uh, but all the ones I've ever done have been on the front plane and they've all worked, and so I'm not going to go away from that. And so if I get in my sketch that's on the front plane, go normal two, you can see all I've got is two concentric circles. It's kind of a tubular shape here that I'll be generating. Uh, notice the circles are concentric or centered about the origin there. And that's important because the origin is going to be the default pierce point when we go to uh, basically attaching the profiles to the, say, the line segment in our last case there that was the center for the, the piece of pipe there. And so just remember that, that the origin location is default pierce point. That's where it's connected during your cross section to your path, if you will, either a line or curved or whatever you have there. Then I've got my two circles, basically the inner and outer uh, diameters of this tube. And notice also I've got some sketch points in here. And everything's nice and fully defined as usual. Uh, but the sketch points are basically alternative pierce points. So when you get inside of the weldment profile, when you're actually applying this profile to a path, you can specify alternative pierce points. And those pierce point selections have to do with the actual sketch points that are in this sketch. And so that's just a few things to remember about the sketch side of setting up this weldment profile. One is that the default pierce point is at the origin. The other is alternative pierce points can be created using sketch points. And so I've got a nice fully defined sketch here. It's a one inch OD, 125 wall thickness there. And so I'll just exit there. And so here are the custom weldment profile. Now notice right now I've got this saved as custom weldment profile SLD PRT. And so this is a regular SOLIDWORKS part. That's not the file extension that you maybe have noticed when I went back to the weldment profiles there. They were all SLDFLP, I believe, as in SOLIDWORKS library feature part. And so if you go File, Save As, and let's just save it in the same spot that I was. SLDLFP, excuse me, I think I trans pose the L and the F last time. Um, we need to save this as this feature, or this part file, SLD LFP. And one other thing that we need to do before we get here is have this selected. And so before I go to save this, after I'm done with my sketch, I select the sketch one, have it highlighted, and then I go file, save as, and then change it to library feature part there. And I'll just throw it right here. And so this will allow me to save it as a library feature part and as a file that can be used as a weldment profile. And so I'll follow the naming convention of my first one there, tube underscore one underscore 0 0.125 for the wall thickness. And I'll save it right here. And so now that I hit save, um, watch what happens to the icon next to sketch one. All right, now you've got the usual sketch icon. After I hit save, notice the icon got this kind of little L next to it, it's kind of green shaped there. Also, this looks a little bit different up here. Uh, just make sure those changes happen uh, so that you can successfully use this 
library feature part file as well in the profile. And so we're looking good at this point. That's so what I'm going to do is close out here. Uh, here's just kind of my test part. Go, there's the weldment profile location, and here's the location for my, my two test pieces here. And so these are both custom defined weldment profiles. And so let's place them so that we can use them in the weldment profiles in SolidWorks. And so what I'll do just to show you, you can create your own standards, um, I'll just call this uh, standard the SCAG standard. And then I'll go to circular tube. And then inside of circular tube, I'm just going to copy and paste both of these. So control C and control V, copies and paste both of them. And notice I'm still following the same structure here. I've got standard, I've got a type, and then I've got the actual sizes. And so with that, we should now be able to use these. And so I'll go into structural member. There's my SCAGS standard. Here's my circular tube. And here's my tube size. And there's the O. 0.0625 is a smaller one, or I can go 0.125 as the, the little bit bigger one there. And so both these seem to be working. If I want to, I can go locate uh, profile. You can see it picked up the origin location of that initial sketch as the default pierce point. But if I want to, I can come here, stick it at the top inner diameter or top outer diameter, left, right, and so forth here. I'll go back to the middle, and I can, of course, accept that and it creates the actual geometry itself there. And so uh, that's the creation of custom weldment profiles inside of SolidWorks. Uh, hopefully this helps you when you're doing your weldment geometry. Thank you for watching the video.